We have to learn how to practice being infinite I. And the best way is to stop being a finite human. There are three levels of silence that you must attain to really start understanding the nature of your infinite highness. I'd like to go into those three levels of silence with you. The first level is very basic. Strangely, it is not practiced by most of the students that you know. Sometimes we ourselves fall into the trap of not practicing the first silence. We think once we practice it in meditation, we've done our job, but the first silence is more than the silence of meditation. It is a silence you carry with you 24 hours a day. In this first level of silence, you shut out the world. You shut out the world mind in you. That's the first level. And until you accept that level as a necessity, you move into the second level without the power of the first level. First, shut out the world mind in you. The second level is when you establish your spiritual identity. And that is a must. You cannot move into the third level until you establish your spiritual identity. And then in the third level, you establish the infinity of your spirit. These three levels bring you to the infinite silence in which God is the only being in the universe. And in this third level of silence, divine thought and divine action manifest divine power. And the word is made flesh as your God life. The first silence then, shut out the world, take no thought. The second silence, accept your spiritual identity in full. The third silence, expand your spiritual identity to infinite I and rest in the divine word, letting God, infinity, live itself as you. We start now with the first silence. And one of the most beautiful ways to begin is to accept divine peace where you are. If you try to enter the first silence to get rid of this or to get rid of that or even to help a friend in need, you won't make it. Don't take this world into your silence. Keep it pure, divine. Take nothing human into your silence, not even a human thought. Begin with divine peace. Please take these words very seriously. They are meant for you. The total silence of the senses is the first step in attaining consciousness of yourself as the infinite eye.
this is really so important that it would be very wise for every student to spend seven mornings attaining total silence before rising from bed in the early a.m. We close the five doors to this world, the five senses. And when we do, the door to our inner world opens up. We awaken in the morning and the world is still around us. Our body is still. And we lie there motionless. The motor of the brain is not yet racing. It's not straining. It's not wrestling with thought, with problems, fears, plans, schedules, or ideas. The mind is still. The mind is relaxed. The mind is unworried. And this is the peace. Establish that peace now. No aches, no pains, no anxieties. The mind is content to remain quiet, alert. Thoughts may come and go, Mental images may stray in. Patiently we bid them depart. We wait for them to stray out. The silence hangs heavily around us. And subtly like a gift from heaven, the peace descends, vague sensory fragments of thought, of images, vanish. Something clicks off. Our brain is insulated from the outer world. We feel a new level of silence. A silence that is independent of world thought. A comfortable silence. Without pressure. And soon time seems to stand still. We are in the peace of the first silence. We have begun the meditation that will liberate our entire being from the prison of the world mind. As you hold this silence until you can maintain it without even thinking about it, you are in the right level of the first silence. And now the senses are still. Above this silence, reach for your soul. Let your soul establish spiritual identity. You are moving into the second silence. 
Your soul is saying, I am spirit. My spirit is one with God. My spirit is pure, unconditioned, not of this world. Perhaps you hear your soul speak these words as Christ speaks them through your soul. My spirit, says Christ, in you was never born. My spirit is timeless, ageless, filled with God's perfection. My spirit is always in perfect harmony, always governed by divine law. My spirit contains all the perfect qualities of God. My spirit has no opposite in matter. My spirit fills the universe. Behind this world, right where this world seems to be, behind all the mental images projected into space and time, stands my spirit. As the only substance in God's perfect universe, I am standing now in a spiritual universe and the one substance of this universe is my spirit which is the spirit of God. This is the permanent truth of my being now and forever. I rest and let this truth infiltrate my being as my soul deepens in the second silence. Perhaps you have experienced the third silence, perhaps not. It is the infinite silence of oneself. We have felt the inner peace in a measure we have surrendered to incorporeality in a spiritual universe. Now come up to the infinite eye. Sell everything finite for infinite eye. Sell humanhood for Christhood. My spirit is infinite, limitless, interminable, unbounded, beyond measure, all-embracing. Every divine quality of my spirit is infinite now. Because I am infinite, because I am infinite peace, can the opposite of peace be real? Cross out the opposite of peace. It denies infinite I. Because I am infinite love, harmony, truth, 
life, power, justice, wisdom, consciousness, can the opposites exist in reality? If God is infinite peace, where can war exist? Where can weapons of war exist? If God is infinite, can nuclear weapons exist? If the kingdom of God is infinite, can a world of pain and sickness be real? If God is infinite spirit, and I am infinite spirit. Am I not the infinite I? Does the infinite I live in a dream world of pain, sickness, and war? Or in a finite world of matter filled with poverty, hunger, lack, limitation? If infinite eye is life, where is death? All these opposites to perfection are the temptations of the senses, striving to present a finite world where only the kingdom of infinite eye has. I transcend this mortal dream. I transcend the imperfect appearances in time and space. Infinite I has come that I may have life more abundantly without the illusion of mortal limitations. Infinite I has come to open the inner eye, to reveal the infinity of my kingdom here on earth as in heaven, for heaven and earth are one, to reveal the absence of all limitation, to baptize me with the blessings of the Holy Spirit. My soul feels the divine substance, the divine activity of God, animating my spirit, my spiritual universe, the divine law that governs the invisible creation. In all things I feel my living spirit. the seamless garment of oneness is the infinite I that I am. Where all forms appear, whatever their condition, only I am. I am the infinite substance of all form everywhere, always perfect, always the perfect manifestation of the perfect spirit of God. My kingdom is real. My kingdom is here. My kingdom is now. I am the infinite eye within every man on this earth and behind the veil of matter. I am the one self undivided, eternal, immaculate, forever.
We are beginning the third silence. And now all space is here within the infinite eye that I am. All time, seemingly past, present, and seemingly future, consolidates into the eternal now. All history and all geography roll into one realization. Encompassing all that ever was and all that ever will be. Into the miracle of hereness and nowness, which I am. This is the beginning of the realization of infinite eye. And from this realization, perfect spiritual power flows throughout my infinite being. The infinite eye is the hidden mystery of scripture. It is the key to salvation. It is the fulfillment of the word of God. We could cite many passages from the Bible to prove that infinite God is the only being on earth and that infinite God individualizes as individual being called the infinite Christ. However, I am going to ask you to hear only one. It is John telling you of the infinity of your own being. It begins in John chapter 5. Verse 19, you should read it today, again, before retiring at night, and make it the theme of your conscious meditation before you enter the infinite eye and disappear into the dream of sleep. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever doeth these, what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Infinite Father, infinite Son, it's automatic. For the Father loveth the Son and showeth him all things. Infinite Father shows infinity to the infinite Son that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. He is speaking about infinity. The infinite oneness of God and the the Father and God the Son. And you are God the Son. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, 
Even so, the Son quickeneth whom he will. In your Christhood, you quicken the world. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. That all men should honor the Son, all men should honor their own infinite Christhood. Even as they honor the Father, as they honor the infinity of God. He that honoreth not the Son, he that accepteth not the infinite Christ, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me. If you believe that you are the infinite Christ, which sent Jesus, He hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. This is a story about your transition when you accept infinite Christhood. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is come, and now is. Don't wait for me to come back. Now is. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, the voice of Christ within. And they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. The infinite Christ of you is the Son of Spirit, the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves, parenthesis, of mortality, shall hear his voice, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Good is accepting infinite Christ I am. Evil is rejecting infinite Christ I am, whether you reject it consciously or unconsciously. This is the divine teaching. Please practice it. The three silences practiced for seven mornings are not easy, but they are explosively beautiful. No matter how difficult they seem, soon they will become like an old shoe, and the power of the three silences will amaze you. That is what you should do before stepping out of bed. Get into the three silences. Know yourself as the living Spirit of God. Rest in those silences. Let infinity be you. Infinite blessings of infinite love from the Isle of Rainbows. See you soon.